Hey everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video I wanted to ramble a bit about Final Fantasy XI versus Final Fantasy XIV from an old school player's perspective. I think the first time I played Final Fantasy was in 2004 when it had relatively recently came out in North America. Yeah, it was out in Japan for one or two years before that. But this is before any of the expansion packs for Final Fantasy XI, uh, before Chains of Promethea, before uh, Ergen, um, and whatever the new ones that they have have nowadays that I haven't even experienced. So I'm, I, I would consider myself pretty old school when it comes to Final Fantasy XI. And uh, back in the day for Final Fantasy XI, um, it, it's, it's very different than other MMOs, because most monsters, mm -hmm. at least at that time, were very dangerous to you as a solo player. So, after you hit about level 10, generally you need to group up to grind experience points effectively. You could uh, keep killing weak mobs, ones that would read as easy prey or decent challenge, meaning that they're one or two or three levels below you, and yeah, you can take them out. Um, but doing that usually, even for weak monsters like that, you would exhaust a lot of your resources, so there would be downtime between fights. And uh, HP and MP didn't recover in the same way that they do nowadays, where you just exit combat and um, you get all your HP and MP back. No, you'd have to sit there on the ground for like one to two minutes in order to actually regain uh, your uh, HP and MP, your resources for actually fighting. So it was very slow, uh, slow paced in how you enter combat and then you move on to the next monster. In order to actually get what were called uh, chains going, you usually have to be in a party uh, with a dedicated healer, which means so you get five or six other people. I can't remember if it was five or six for the group size. Um, and then you go fight monsters that are way tougher than each individual person, which makes it very dangerous. So uh, these monsters, the ones that would read as very tough or incredibly tough in Final Fantasy XI, um, if, the t if they manage to kill the tank, which was possible, you have six people and you can still lose to a single mob if they use the right skill. Um, so, okay, so for instance, there are these goblins that you use bomb toss. I think the goblins in Final Fantasy XIV still have bomb toss, but it's far less deadly than it used to be. Um, and you're like level 30 in Final Fantasy XI. That bomb toss can sometimes do like 200 or 300 damage, which is a lot of HP. If your tank's not at full HP, even he could drop to that. So when the tank dies, um, unless the monster is very close to dying, often you actually need to run away from the monster. It's that bad. Um, which just means one monster could take out the entire party, and often you'd need to run. But um, running in Final Fantasy XI is also dangerous because usually you have to go pick. You had to go pick out these uh, safe locations for fighting monsters because most monsters would be aggressive, and if a random monster comes in and attacks a group while you're fighting another monster, that's a really deadly situation. Two monsters against your group is often too much to handle um, in a leveling area. So uh, if you try to run from the monsters, that means you have to run all the way to uh, the border of the zone, which means the uh, you leave the area in order to disengage the mob. And I think that was the only way to do that. Um, at least with any, without any crazy skills that I can't think of, if there was one. Um, which means, if you mess up, the tank dies, you have to run for like two minutes to get to the border of a zone, so that you can re-exit, re-enter, resurrect the tank. Oh, and there was resurrection sickness too, so um, that would mean that I, I think the tank would be out of it for a few minutes before he would actually regain his stats and be able to fight again. Alternatively, he has to basically release his spirit and walk back to the location, which in itself could take a few minutes. So what you should get from that is that in the old school days, um, leveling up or just parties in general or the game in general was very unforgiving. Um, and walking was pretty slow, too. It took a lot longer to walk from zone to zone. And the world was pretty massive, too. But... Moving on to Final Fantasy XIV, nowadays what you've got is much more of like a World of Warcraft type deal 
where uh, you can easily kill four to five monsters on your own as a solo player, even if you're a class that uh, isn't really good at slaying monsters. So if you're like a tank or a healer, you can still do all right against regular monsters that are your level or even one level higher. Um, also, they give you plenty of potions and ethers and stuff like that. So this is... Uh, items for recovering HP or MP, and you don't feel that bad about using them because the game gives you plenty of them as time goes on, and they're relatively cheap to purchase from vendors too. But in Final Fantasy XI, uh, the money gill was very, very precious, so you would never just bring potions um, for like regular leveling up. It, it's just too cost prohibitive if you have to spend like 200, 500, 1000 gill on every potion, and then it doesn't even do that much to begin with. You would reserve that stuff for when you were doing what we called BCNMs, uh, Burning Circle Notorious Monster Fights, which are basically uh, where you do um, a tough encounter, and if you win, you get a uh, really good treasure, which you could sell in the auction house. Like, there was an item called an Astral Ring, uh, which converted HP, max HP, into max MP, and was very sought after by uh, spellcasters, so you could sell that for millions of gil. You get one of those if you get lucky enough in that encounter, and uh, you have enough money for quite a while. Um, but in order to even do those fights, you had to grind monsters. Uh, there, there was these things called beastman seals, and you had to have to get like 20 or 30 of those off of regular monsters to even have an attempt at the fight. So you take those things pretty seriously, because it, it take, you have to like grind for hours to get enough seals, and then you have enough to do that fight, and you don't want to waste, um, basically, your chances, because there's a lot of money on the line, right? Uh, in Final Fantasy XIV, though, uh, money is kind of a lot looser from what I've seen. Um, and yes, I've only played up to, like, level 26 or so by now, but mostly the only thing I really use the money for is uh, teleportation around. Uh, I'm sure at higher levels, like, uh, there's actually gear that you really feel like you need to buy from the auction house, but... They give you plenty of decent stuff just by doing the quests, so like you can tank instances fine, there's no problem there. And the instances aren't even that hard. Instance, of course, being um, an area that's reserved for your party specifically, um, where you do a dungeon or something like that. Uh, but what makes it an instance is that no one outside of your party can enter it, and that the server can create duplicate copies for other groups that want to attempt that same content. Okay, so let's see, what else? Uh, differences between Final Fantasy XI and Final Fantasy XIV. Um, yeah, so going back to the whole WoW thing, uh, there's a ton of quests in Final Fantasy XIV, and they're pretty much mandatory. Like, uh, you can kill monsters for XP, but it's not like Final Fantasy XI, where you optimally go do uh, monster... Uh, you, you just kill monsters for XP rather than doing quests. Um... Because in Final Fantasy XI, if you can effectively kill tough monsters, you can get like 200 XP, 200 XP, 200 XP, and leveling up was like 5 or 6k, or getting up to like 10k at higher levels. So 200 XP is actually a lot. Um, but in, in, in Final Fantasy XIV, it's like you get, at like level 25, uh, like 300 XP for killing a monster that's your level, or you can get 9,000 XP for killing a quest, and you need 100,000 to level up. So... Killing the monster is not an effective strategy, really. Um, so you have to go do these quests, and the quest chains not only uh, give you the most experience points, but they're also required to unlock dungeons. You cannot do dungeons until you've reached certain points in the main storyline quests, which I think is really annoying, to be honest. I prefer to just have uh, like the leash taken off. Let me challenge whatever I want as long as I'm the level for it. If, if it kills my character... That's my problem. I'm the one who decided to, like, challenge it. You don't need to, like, um, make sure I'm good enough with these random quest chains or something like that. Uh, I prefer to just be able to go straight into the dungeon as soon as I'm the right level for it. But, yeah, you have to do these quests to level up, to get access to uh, different content. Um, and uh, now there's, like, like uh, kind of, what would you call it, like, reputation factions um, like the Limza, Limenza, um, Stormguard, I think they're called, and, uh, if you do quests for them, you can get, like, a Chocobo and something like that, but it's, like, absolutely mandatory that you do those. Now, in Final Fantasy XI, there were some mandatory quests, like, you have to do quests in order to unlock 
advanced jobs. You did have to do a quest for a chocobo, which was pretty uh, annoying, actually, because it took a while. Um, like, six in-game days, which I think is like six actual hours, or maybe three hours, something like that. But a long time. Um, yep. And uh, the dungeon content itself. So, um, when you actually do want to go do, like, group fights... In Final Fantasy XIV, because it's instanced like WoW, it's like, okay, you can just cycle through the content, you can farm it as much as possible, as much as you want, as much as possible. Um, just keep going in there, it's not too big of a challenge, it's just kind of like, yeah, you face roll, you tank some mobs, you tank a boss, you watch out for his big attack, you win, and you get some loot. Now, when you do actually get the drops in the loot, it feels significantly less awesome than in Final Fantasy XI, because it's just so easy to get. So, in Final Fantasy XI, uh, generally, if you want to go hunt, like, big boss fights, um, a lot of them are actually, like, rare spawns that happen to be in the field. So, um, uh, let's see, for instance, um, okay, Le Leaping Lizzie, I think that's one any Final Fantasy player knows about. Um, so, there's a monster called Leaping Lizzie, which is just a giant rock lizard, it's about level 10, and it exists around the area called Vastok, which is kind of the equivalent of Ora. Um, and this monster, you can make it spawn like every half an hour or something like that, but it was constantly farmed for these items called Leaping Boots, which are a rare drop-off of that monster. So, um, whenever you're there, if you're unlucky, there's going to be one or two competitors also looking for it, or just random people who happen to be coming by that will definitely jump off of their chocobo in order to steal the kill from you. So you're sitting there, you're farming it, and um, you got like one competitor, right? So let's just say you get an even split in the number of kills per hour, and uh, that means each person gets one kill per hour, right? But then the boots have like a, I don't know, like a 10% drop rate or something like that. Which means that if you want to get a pair of leaping boots, you would have to stay there for 10 hours real lifetime in order to farm that item. And what what are the boots? It's uh, it's like a level 7 requirement, gives you plus 3 dex, plus 3 agility, 3 defense. Um, like for the level, that is actually insanely good stats in that game. So you would actually use those boots up until like level... 25, 30, 40, uh, depending on the class, because those stats really help uh, classes like Thief. Um, so they were highly sought after, and people would love to sell them on the auction house and make several hundred thousand kill, which is a lot of money in that game. Or was a lot of money in that game at the time, anyway. Um, it got so bad that they actually made it so that certain items like that were unable to be sold on the auction house. They were bound to your character to reduce the amount of gill farmers who would just go sit there and steal the monster and not let any newer players ever have it because they're just looking for money. Um, so yeah, when you actually got drops like that, it was pretty crazy. It's like, oh my god, after like an entire day, real lifetime of farming that stupid lizard, I finally got a pair of leaping boots. Uh, yeah, Leaping Boots, I think that's what they're called. But in Final Fantasy XIV, it's like, uh, well, I, I go into the dungeon, and then uh, you kill some bosses, and oh, oh sweet, the uh, new weapon dropped. It's uh, pink or green quality, which means it's better than the one I just got from the quest. But it's like, eh? You know, it's like, so it gives you a couple extra points of stats. You don't really need the stats anyway, because the content's not that challenging. So, it's... Uh, it's pretty whatever. It doesn't have the same epic feel there, but in some ways that's not a bad thing because, you know, you could waste so much time getting invested in, uh, like, the Burning Circle Notorious Monsters or just the open world fights and that kind of thing in Final Fantasy XI. It was, it was a much slower game and a much more, I, I don't know, like, methodical game. But uh, Final Fantasy XIV, for players that do kind of want to play more casually or just want to uh, quest, level up quickly, get to the end game content, which I think the end game content of Final Fantasy XIV does look pretty sweet. Um, I love the soundtracks uh, of the big boss fights. I've heard a bunch of them on YouTube, and you should go check them out too if you haven't. Um, but yeah, it's just a much more fast paced game. It's much more in line with a game like World of Warcraft. Uh, which originally was a bit more hardcore, but, you know, as the expansions go on, they make it uh, more casual, easy to level up, uh, easier access to stuff. And it's it's less frustrating to play, 
but it also does reduce some of the epic feel of it. Like, World of Warcraft, uh, epics don't mean anything anymore. They used to mean something when it was like vanilla or something, uh, vanilla, the original uh, level 60 grind. Um, yeah, if you had like four epics, you were a real badass back then, but now it's like, psh, whatever, so does everybody else. And that's kind of the same feeling you get with Final Fantasy XIV. It's it's not like oh you have a full set of artifact gear that guy's that guy's super cool. It's like everybody has a full set of artifact gear. Um, so yeah, just my thoughts on Final Fantasy XI versus Final Fantasy XIV as a old school Final Fantasy XI player. Um, I have some pretty good experiences in both games. Um, I don't think Final Fantasy XIV is bad or anything. It's just a different play style. And to be fair, Final Fantasy XI, at this point, I would never want to go back and actually endure that. Again, the uh, really painful experiences, how slow everything is, how much it sucks when you die, all those other kind of things. It's probably, uh, it's probably best that that kind of play style was left in the past because it's, it's just really unfriendly to newer players uh, and also unfriendly to people who aren't going to have a lot of time to invest in their gaming experiences. So with that said, I've been Dark Skeleton. Hope this video uh, was entertaining for you guys, gave you some insight into the long distant past when I was like a teenager. Um, and I will see you guys in my future video content, hopefully.